So I saw one of these stores already on uh, the drive in here, Heart Attack Fried Chicken and Burger. And uh, I'm not sure I really would go here normally, but it looks like they have air conditioning. And so I wouldn't mind some chicken and a burger and just uh, see how it is. So let's go check that out. So this is the burger and they give you these plastic gloves to eat it with so it doesn't get messy, I guess. So it looks like bacon, onion rings, tomato lettuce, which I'm not going to eat because I'm worried that it got cleaned with tap water. I don't want to get sick, so I'm going to have to take that off. So uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's see how it tastes. So that burger was good, except that because I couldn't use the lettuce and tomato and uh, put the tons of ketchup that I normally put, uh, that takes away a little from it. But uh, it took a while to get my food, I think because they cooked the burger right then and there. It wasn't like preheated or something, so that was pretty good. Um, these fries though, this is something I've never seen before. They have a slight taste of curry on them. So, they're like curry flavored fries and they're they're really tasty. <laughs> I really like them. That's pretty good. Heart attack, uh, heart attack store. <laughs> heart attack burger and chicken. So if you come to Cairo and you want some curry, uh, curry french fries and good burgers and chicken, check out Heart Attack. Heart Attack. <laughs> burger and chicken. Look at the size of these chicken pieces, man. That's amazing. Karam El Sham. And this place has a lot of customers. So how much is that? One forty. That's like uh, three dollars and fifty cents. Oh, we got some. Good looking food here. So this is interesting. On one side you have the conservative stuff and on the other side you got uh, chains and lingerie and all kinds of stuff. I thought, uh, thought Egypt was very conservative. I guess behind closed doors that's a different story, right? Hey guys, I'm at the Greek club in Cairo which apparently is an old actual kind of Greek club but it's also a restaurant and uh, it's not very busy right now because they just open at 7 but uh, this is my souvlaki platter with I guess a keftedis or something um, water Egyptian beer uh, the thing about this club is <laughs> it might as well be a secret club because it is really hard to find I passed this thing like five times trying to find it it's in some building that's under construction and I thought this was a ground floor thing from the pictures on uh, Google reviews but this is actually in an apartment building you have to take an elevator up to the first floor and this is like an outside balcony so um, I'm gonna show what it looks like outside so you know the address or you know the surroundings what place to go in because <laughs> um, this is not easy to find, but the atmosphere looks good. I'm sure when more people get here, um, it's going to be uh, more <laughs> more interesting. But right now, I'm going to uh, try this souvlaki, which looks like it's kind of curry flavored. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's like some little bit of curry flavor on there or something. So, so far, so good. So it's a little bit more crowded, not that crowded though for a Sunday night, I guess. But uh, I had my dinner and uh, it's time to go. So this place is actually pretty big. It's like a bar inside or something.
as you see, there's no sign or anything. The only sign is for life insurance. And outside on the street, there's also no signs and there's all this construction work going on. So, I passed here this gropey sign construction and it just says life insurance, no <laughs> Greek club or nothing. So, uh, <laughs> very hard to find, but it's, you know, it's right off of this big intersection here. So as I'm leaving the Greek club trying to videotape to describe to people where this place is, if you notice these three guys on the right over here coming up, this shorter guy with his back towards me, I believe he's not a police officer. He just knows how to speak English. So he translated for them. And I don't remember which guy came up to me. I think it was the guy with the darker shirt, not the guy with the white t-shirt with something written on it. And when I made my first trip through here earlier on around 4.30, this scooter was here. I didn't see these people. I looked back on the film, but apparently this police officer must be hanging out here all day, keeping an eye on things. So as I walk around this corner, this guy, and I believe this undercover police officer come up to me and ask me, what the hell am I doing? So uh, if you want to find this place, I'll leave the address in the description below. Uh, Sister, Sister, yes. do you want to talk to the policeman? 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 Do you want to talk to the and the other one claimed to be an undercover cop. So the civilian was translating for the cop, telling me that I'm not allowed to film on the streets of Egypt or Cairo or whatever. Now, this is not true, but I didn't know that until I got home and looked it up, and there was a law passed in 2022 allowing civilians and tourists to film on streets as long as it's not a police building or military building, something like that, which I wasn't doing. Um, I was just coming out of the Greek club and trying to film uh, the entrance in the area around it to show people how to get there in case they wanted to go there. But the man said, and I told him this, I'm just filming, I just came from the Greek club. The man said, the police man said, this is the second time he saw me filming. And so I was around that area earlier, like at least more an hour or more when I was around filming and stuff like that, just walking around. So this guy was around, you know, that area and saw me the first time. And now he saw me the second time and came up to me. And so I turned off the video and I said, okay. And I, I started, I, I don't know, he said something about deleting my memory card or deleting the video or something along, like he mentioned, like we should delete the video or some. So, and I, ha I haven't backed up all the stuff that I did at the pyramids, my camel ride, all this stuff. I was like, oh no, you know, I don't want to get this stuff deleted. So I was like, all right, yeah, you know, I turned it off and I walked away. And thankfully they didn't pursue it any further. But there's something to think about when you go to another country that they have the laws, but the policemen don't necessarily know or they make stuff up arbitrarily. And so looking up this law, I saw these videos of a really famous YouTuber that does food videos. And he said, do not come to Egypt because he had this same problem, but with all of his, you know, thousands of dollars worth of equipment, they confiscated, wouldn't let him film there until uh, he, you know, he already had a permit, but they still didn't give him his equipment back. And it was like a whole bureaucracy. And he said, you know, nobody knows what they're doing. They just make it up as they go along. So, he was very disappointed and disillusioned with trying to film in Egypt. He said he filmed in many other countries all over the world and he never had this kind of problem. So um, I still like Egypt. I love the pyramids and all of that. I recommend coming, but if you're thinking of just going around and filming stuff, <laughs> um, think twice or be very careful or do it in select places that are touristy because who knows, you might run into a problem because these police don't really know the law and so 
they could detain you, they could take your stuff, they could, you know, even arrest you for a day or something. They don't even have to arrest you. If they detain you and you miss your flight or something like that, it could be a big problem for you. So I hope this was uh, some helpful information, and I hope you guys liked this video. Thanks for watching, guys.